In this video, we'll see how to calculate the odds ratio and its 95% confidence interval based on a simple example. We will also discuss how to interpret the odds ratio as a relative risk for rare diseases. An odds ratio is usually calculated for case control studies. In a case control study, one collects a certain number of cases and a certain number of controls. Suppose that we have collected 100 patients with lung cancer and 100 controls. The individuals in the control group do not have the disease that we study and they are usually selected so they have about the same age and sex as the ones in the disease group. Once we have collected cases and controls, we can analyze some kind of difference in exposure between the two groups. In this example, we ask the people if they are smokers or not. Suppose that 84% of the ones with lung cancer are smokers, whereas only 20% of the ones in the control group are smokers. From the video about probability versus odds, we know that the odds can be calculated as the probability of a successful outcome divided by the probability of an unsuccessful outcome. Since we study smoking in our example, a successful outcome is associated with smoking in this case. The odds to be a smoker in the lung cancer group is 5.25, which means that there are 5.25 smokers for every non-smoker in this group. The corresponding odds for the control group is 0.25, which means that there are 0.25 smokers for every non-smoker in this group or that there are four non-smokers on every smoker. The odds ratio in this example is therefore 21, which means that the odds of being a smoker in the lung cancer group is 21 times the odds of being a smoker in the control group. Usually, we summarize the data in a table like this. We see that we have in total 100 cases, where 84 of these are smokers, and 16 are non-smokers. We have collected the same number of controls, where 20 of these happen to be smokers, and 80 happen to be non-smokers. Out of the 200 individuals in our study, 104 are smokers, and 96 are non-smokers. We see that it is much more likely that you are a smoker if you have lung cancer compared to if you do not have lung cancer. Let's move the table up here. We calculated the odds of being a smoker in the lung cancer group like this, where we divided the proportion of smokers by the proportion of non-smokers. Note that we can cancel what we have in the denominators, which means that we can calculate the odds for the cases as A divided by C. Similarly, the odds for the controls can be calculated as B divided by D. The odds ratio can therefore directly be calculated like this, or like this. For example, A times D divided by C times B is 21. When the odds ratio is greater than 1, we know that the exposure is positively related to the disease. In our example, this means that it is more likely that you are a smoker if you have lung cancer compared to if you do not have lung cancer. From our example, we know that the odds of being a smoker if you have lung cancer is 21 times the odds of being a smoker if you belong to the control group. Usually, we like to test if the odds ratio is significantly different from 1 to make sure that the association we observe is not just due to chance. The null hypothesis of such a test states that the odds are the same in the two groups, which means that the odds ratio is equal to 1. To test if the odds ratio is significantly different from 1, one can use a chi-square test or compute a 95% confidence interval. We will here see how to calculate a 95% confidence interval for the odds ratio. To calculate the confidence interval, 
we'll first calculate the standard error of the logged odds ratio. We plug in the values from the corresponding elements in the table and do the math. Then we calculate the 95% confidence interval with this equation, where we plug in the natural log of the estimated odds ratio and the standard error. This is the critical value from the standard normal distribution that is used to create a 95% confidence interval. Note that E is the Euler's number, which is approximately equal to 2.71A2A2. If we calculate the upper and lower limit of the interval, we see that we get the confidence interval that spans from 10.17 to 43.37. We are therefore 95% sure that the true odds ratio lies between these values. Our best estimate based on our sample is 21. Remember that the null hypothesis states that the odds ratio is equal to 1. Since the value 1 is not included in this interval, because the value 1 is to the left of this interval, we can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the odds ratio is significantly greater than 1. So, we have concluded that the odds of being a smoker if you have lung cancer is 21 times the odds of being a smoker if you do not have lung cancer. However, what does this actually mean? Well, it means that it is more likely to find a smoker in the lung cancer group than in the control group. But is this really what we would like to conclude from the study? The whole point of the study must be to know if smokers have a higher risk to get lung cancer, right? So far, we had basically just concluded that it is more likely to be a smoker if you have lung cancer, which is actually not that exciting. When we do a case control study, we cannot calculate any risk. Suppose that I would calculate the risk to get lung cancer like this, where I divide the number of people who have lung cancer by the total number in our study. Then we see that the risk to get lung cancer is 50%, which would be completely misleading. This is because I was the one we decided the number of cases and controls to be included in my study. Since I decided to include the same number of controls as cases, 50% in the study will have lung cancer. If I would instead have collected 200 controls, that should of course not affect the risk to get lung cancer, because the risk to get lung cancer should not depend on how many cases and controls that are included in my study. This means that when we do a case control study, we cannot calculate any risk to get the disease. However, based on the so-called rare disease assumption, the odds ratio is assumed to be approximately equal to the relative risk for rare diseases. This means that we can interpret our previous odds ratio of 21 as the risk to get cancer if you smoke is 21 times the risk if you do not smoke, given that lung cancer is a rare disease. I know, it sounds a bit strange that we can estimate the relative risk without being able to estimate any risk. To explain how this works, suppose that we have a population of 1,000 individuals of about the same age and sex where 10% of these have lung cancer. The prevalence of lung cancer is therefore 10% in this example. 16% of these cancer patients are non-smokers, and 84% are smokers. In comparison, out of the ones who do not have lung cancer, only 20% are smokers. Suppose that we would do a case control study where we include all the ones who have lung cancer and randomly select a sample of 100 individuals from the healthy group as our control group. Our sample is therefore expected to contain 20% smokers. Suppose that 20% in our sample that represents the control group are smokers, 
then the odds of being a smoker in the control group is 0.25 and 5.25 in the lung cancer group. The odds ratio is therefore 21. Now, suppose that we instead perform a cohort study where we follow a number of smokers and non-smokers over time and check how many of these that get lung cancer. Suppose that these individuals initially are healthy but will later on get lung cancer. Suppose that we have followed 264 smokers and 736 non-smokers over many years. 84 of the smokers got lung cancer, whereas only 16 out of the 736 non-smokers got lung cancer. The risk for smokers to get lung cancer is about 31.8%, whereas the risk for the non-smokers is 2.2%. The relative risk is therefore 14.4, which is quite far away from the odds ratio. The odds ratio therefore overestimates the relative risk. Now, suppose that the population is 10 times bigger where the prevalence of lung cancer is now only 1%. This means that we still have 100 lung cancer patients, but 9,900 individuals that do not have lung cancer. If we would do a case control study, we would expect to get the same odds ratio as before because the proportions of smokers have not changed. If we instead would perform a cohort study where we now follow 2,064 smokers, and 7,936 non-smokers. We would expect to identify the same number of lung cancer cases as before. Because 1% of 10,000 is 100, the risk for the smokers to get lung cancer has now been reduced to 4%, and the risk for the non-smokers has been reduced to 0.2%. The relative risk is now 20, which is very close to the odds ratio. The odds ratio is therefore a better approximation of the relative risk when the prevalence is 1% or lower. Remember that the odds ratio can be calculated like this, whereas the relative risk can be calculated like this. We can reformulate this part like this. For rare diseases, a and C are expected to be relatively low in cohort studies, compared to B and D. These two products are therefore much smaller compared to these. If we neglect these terms, we see that the relative risk is calculated in the same way as the odds ratio. This was the end of this video about the odds ratio. Thanks for watching.